Hey, my lovely Willow Vibes tribe members. I'm Jessica from Willow Vines Intuitive Vibes, and I'm here to do a collective message. Today is Saturday, July 8th, 2023, if you care to know the date, and it is before 9 a.m. in the morning. But anyways, like, look, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Stick around. I hope you do stay. I would love it if you would. You know, I hit record and wasn't prepared again. Like, I wasn't ready to start recording. I wasn't ready to start something, say something. So I had to stop it and then do something, like take care or whatever, and um, and then hit record. And it's funny, because while I was sitting here doing some channel messages, I did hear turn the AC off, and that's what I forgot to do. So Spirit was telling me, <laughs> reminding me to do it, and I forgot because I didn't pay attention, or I didn't listen. Someone wasn't really paying attention. They might have been hearing what someone was saying, or... You know what I mean? Because you can hear what someone says, but not truly listen. And I kind of feel like that could have been going on in a situation for some of you. Um, or they were listening and just not taking the advice. Like, yeah, I know what you're talking about, but I'm going to still do this, you know. Or they forgot about something, one or the other. But it's just kind of funny because I did that recently, like a couple readings back where... I had I hit record and I was like, nope, oh shit, and then stopped it and had to take care of stuff and come back. So that reading, I can't I think it was yesterday. It was either yesterday or the day before. Um, that reading can be significant or tied into this energy somehow. Um, and before I hit record, as I'm sitting here, just kind of like, what's going on, spirit? An orb. I saw an orb just kind of dance around and float. And it got bigger. It started off as like a little sparkle and it grew as it came down. Um, so there's growth in a situation, someone seeing more clearly, like, for example, if you catch like a little, little sparkle of glitter or something in the corner of your eye, or you're like, oh, well, well that kind of sparkled, I don't know why. And it's, it's something starting to come into focus, but not really knowing exactly what it is. And then it's like, oh, I know exactly what this is. Because as, um, as it comes into focus, as you have a better understanding, it, it just grows. And it's like, oh, that's what that is. So someone seeing something is what I want to say with that. Um, I heard the word sparingly. So do something sparingly. I'm not sure exactly what that's about. And then I heard freedom rings. So there is a sense of freedom in this energy where you're free to do what you want, to be with who you want to be with, to move forward in whatever way, like nothing's holding you back anymore. So if you were once feeling kind of restrained and tied up and stuck and like, oh, I don't know, I feel like even if you don't know everything, you know enough, you see enough, you feel enough to to take chances, to take risks and to move, to move forward fearlessly is what this feels like. So there's a lot of forward movement here and you're free from restrictions, which is beautiful. <coughs> Love conquers all things. Show compassion. Um, that is true. I mean, I always say that. Love makes the world go around and stuff like that. But I feel like this is saying, like, show compassion because there's someone here who is sorry because I heard I'm sorry. Show compassion for someone who potentially wants your forgiveness. I did see forgiveness in this deck. Oh, it's at the bottom now. I acknowledge that harboring resentment blocks the flow of love. That's so funny when that stuff happens. It wasn't at the bottom of the deck when I saw it. Um, somebody might want forgiveness. Just show them compassion because we all screw up. Even if this person hurt you and caused problems, wreaked havoc on your life, you know, it's okay to be compassionate and kind because that's a reflection of yourself. It has nothing to do with them. It doesn't mean you have to reconnect with them. It doesn't mean you have to date them, be their friend, be in their life. It's just being the bigger person. So it's like love conquers all. And um, a lot of times in situations like that, say somebody is sorry, they want your forgiveness. You give it to them, but you're doing it for yourself. And some people might go, you don't deserve my forgiveness because you know, you did this, this, and this. But if you show them the love and just let it go for yourself, you're not only helping you, you're helping them because through compassion, even if things don't move forward between you and that person, even if it's like, you know, that's just dead and gone, whatever, it's like closure, close the book on this, it shows that person 
how to act and that not every person's going to be reactive. They're not going to blow a fuse when they apologize. So it's teaching them a very valuable lesson so that they don't do what they did to you to another person. Does that make sense? So it's like leading by example. Be the leader in your own life and in other people's when they come into your life. That's kind of what that feels like to me. Because um, someone might come in that you might go, I don't want to talk to you. And show compassion. Don't be, don't go into full on bitch mode. You know what I mean? Um, there is a lot of passion here that could have been part of the problem. I don't know if there was just passion between you and this person or if passion got in the way, like third party interference, someone cheating, um, choosing someone over you, whatever, like love them and leave them type energy that, that could be in here. Love them and leave them, love them and leave them. Um, if that's the case, this is someone you haven't talked to in a while. This isn't easy for someone connecting to you. Um, connecting to anyone, like having a true connection is not easy for whoever this person is, which is probably why there's such a, such a disconnect, like why they acted the way they did, why they did whatever they did in the past, um, to hurt you, to upset you or whatever, because they just, there's never really like a true connection with that person. They've never really had a true connection. They might feel like they have one with you, but it's, it's because you were connected to them because they've never been connected to anyone because they were just connected to themselves. You know what I mean? They were disconnected from themselves. If you really think about it, um, somebody wants to come clean about something. So in today's energy, someone might want to admit their wrongdoings. Like, all right, I know, you know, this, this, and this, I know you felt this way and whatever, but I want to clear the air with you. Like, I want to let you know exactly what's up here. You know, exactly why I did what I did. Exactly what happened. Um, someone did something pretty not, pretty nasty. Not so nice. Um, to another person. And they've been harboring that deep, dark secret for a while. They've been... It's been, it's been eating them up inside, whoever it is. Um... And they want to come clean. Like, it's almost like it's now or never type energy. Whatever it is, it's really hard for this person to say because they're worried about your reaction for one. So, you know, love conquers all things. Have compassion. Show compassion even if you're upset. It's okay to feel angry or, you know, whatever emotion you're going to feel when you hear this, see this, whatever. But, you know be mature about it. Look at it from a different perspective. Look at it from not just your own perspective, but from theirs. Like, okay, it's not condoning their actions or whatever happened, but it's having an understanding, like, you know, having an understanding that hurt people hurt other people and not everybody's elevated. Not everybody's healed from the pains and of the past and whatever. And, some people act out. It doesn't make it right, but it happens. So it's like, if you have that understanding, you can show a level of compassion so that you can get the information you need and that they can clear their conscience, get it off their chest. So hopefully they can heal and not fuck somebody else over, you know, not hurt somebody else. Um, because maybe the next person that they do that to isn't as strong as you and you don't want that for them. You know what I mean? So it's almost like, this level of forgiveness and compassion has nothing to do with the quote unquote perpetrator. It has to do with every other person they're going to meet thereafter. Like, what did they do wrong? Absolutely nothing. So it's like a sense of protection. In helping the problem, you're actually helping other people who aren't a problem. That's kind of what that feels like to me. So look at it from that perspective, even if you're like, you stupid mother of, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, what is that? It's like dark in my... I don't know what's in my coat on my straw. Well, that coffee's done. <laughs> um, I'll get a different one because that was from last night anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. 
that's maybe it's from sitting in the fridge I don't know but now I'm not I don't like anyways moving on so forgiveness show discipline all right so let's see the overall energy for this reading for this wonderful saturday happy saturday you've waited a long time to hear this apology apparently um or to get this information pride i love myself and i see myself in everyone and courage um, I find the inner strength to face fear with confidence. That's what this person is doing. Um, I feel like they, their pride and ego got in the way and it was stopping. The, it was like basically they were too scared. Like a lot of times when we sit in our ego and we're very prideful, like, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm too much of a woman or a man or whatever to say this, do this, to own up to whatever. It's because they feel really weak. So they it's a defense mechanism, basically. So they have to sit in that arrogant energy. And someone acts that way, or that's the energy that they were in, because they lacked courage. But I feel like courage is overriding their pride right now, which is good because it's like, all right, I don't want to be a weak bitch. I'm not a weak bitch. I'm strong enough to say this. Rage is standing out. I'm strong enough to say this without raging out, without flipping out. This person could get angry easily because they know they screwed up. Because it's making me think of the liar energy where, you know, someone... Uh, usually, if you're telling the truth, you'll be like... You'll be honest, you know. you'll it will The story will never change. And the only time you're going to get mad is if you really want someone, you know to see your side of things, but usually truth tellers only get angry if it's a serious accusation. You know what I mean? And it's like, I did not fucking do that. Or you know what I mean? But liars will do it all the time because they get defensive. Um, they'll either act really calm, cool, and collected, like not, like they're not phased at all, or, you know, they can get angry. Um, because you don't believe them and they know it. So someone might might be worried that you won't believe them. Yeah, they feel like a failure. I understand that a mistake is only an opportunity to learn, which is what I always say. But somebody, somebody doesn't look at failures as or mistakes as lessons. They look at them as failures. Like, oh, I'm a fuck up. I'm a fuck up. And they feel guilty for something that they did. When they should just... <sighs> You know, do the right thing. Learn to move past whatever this is. All right. I kind of want one of these. So let's see. Someone needs to move past something. And I feel like they're not going to move past whatever this is until they speak up and um, own up to what whatever role they played in, in this situation. Um, a kaleidoscope could be significant for some of you. Horse. I talked about the dream and freeing the horse and all that. Well, I feel like in order for the horse to feel free, whoever this is representing, because this is about strength as well and endurance, because horses are strong. Um, they're very intuitive as well. Having the courage to move past something, to free themselves from the burdens that they bear. That's kind of what this feels like. Someone needs to have the strength and courage to free themselves from the burdens that they bear from whatever they said or did or whatever. Um, because they're the only ones, they have the key to their freedom. Let freedom ring. And they were the ones that were keeping themselves locked up is what that feels like. And they no longer want to do that. They're trying to figure out how to maneuver through the situation. Because I feel like they don't want to hurt you any more than they already have. So it's almost like if I tell you the truth, if I say this, if I come clean, it's going to hurt you. And I've already hurt you. So I don't want to cause more harm. But in keeping it to themselves, you don't get the clarity, which can be painful. But even if you move past it, you know, that's probably something you wanted in this situation. But it's going to just hurt them. You're, 
your inner strength is ma is giving them the courage to move forward. You know, it's funny. Uh, I think it was yesterday. It was either yesterday or the day before. I kept doing this like I was turning a doorknob. I was trying to open a door like, all right, I want to open the door to say this. Um, but it was locked. Someone locked themselves out is what it feels like. I don't feel like you locked them out. I feel like they locked themselves up, out, whatever. Um, but for the longest time, I used to have those antique, um, these things, the door, they're on the door where the key goes in. I had them hanging up behind me and I have doorknobs and I put one together and I was like, I gotta glue it and stuff or figure out how I'm gonna keep it together. But this one fits really good. All the other ones don't fit, fit that nice in here. And what's weird is when I was looking at the doorknobs that I have, cause they're all antiques, some of them are kind of ornate and they've got designs and stuff, but this one's very plain and the plain one fits perfectly. In this like whimsical looking um, backsplash thing, you know, whatever the hell it's called. And it's got like, looked like it was outside and it had some moss and stuff on it. And I just, I love it because it's whimsical. It's almost like the enchanted garden. You know what I mean? Like that's what this feels like. And you wouldn't think this plain doorknob would go with this fancy pants, weird, unique, eccentric setup because they don't match. They're opposites, but you don't want too much of the same thing. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, it'd be too busy. It would be too like ooh, 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 all over the place. So it, that's what creates the balance. It's like aesthetically appealing for one, but regardless of that, that's kind of what I'm getting from this. <coughs> it's like, say this is you and you're a free spirit. You're kind of whimsical. You're, you're kooky, you're, you're whatever. And then your person is the doorknob and they're, they're just, they're just a plain, a plain Jane, you know, plain Jim, whatever, male, female, doesn't matter. There's, they're not eccentric. They're not over the top. They're, they're just an everyday muggle. <laughs> you know what I mean? But look how pretty that looks together. It fits, it works because it creates the balance. So it's like, yeah, the attention might be drawn here because it's like, ooh, that's pretty, what is that? But this is the foundation. Because if you didn't have the doorknob, you can't come in and out. You know what I mean? Like you can't open the door, close it, or it won't lock when you want it to, won't shut behind you. Like it's, it's very handy. This is very practical. Um, you're not gonna have to have any temporary fixes because it's all put together. When you're together, it's all put together. I don't know, it's kind of something like that. But I did that last night and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And I didn't know why I said it there. Like, it felt significant, but I didn't know what it was for. So it was for this reading. So there you go. Your person might not be cut right out of your ass. They might not be exactly like you and that's a good thing because that would be boring as shit it would be like walking around with yourself all the time when you can do that all by yourself you know what I mean you want a little bit of flavor you want you also want someone who can ground keep you grounded and centered because it's reminding me of a reading I did a long time ago I think it was like three years ago might have been two two three years ago and the way that I said it was there's like two people. There's one who's grounded and they're very practical. I don't, this, they could have been rigid because we do have pride and ego and shit over here, but it's like, we do things by the book. I'm, I'm here on earth <laughs> kind of energy. And here you are like, I'm, you know, I'm over here, I'm over there. I'm just kind of all over the place. Even if you're not a scatterbrain, even if you're not like literally all over the place, you're you have more freedom. You're just flying free, basically. And this person, it's like you're the, you're the kite. There's a string tethered to you and they're holding you down so that you can kind of go, okay, like I'm just gonna go do my thing. And this one keeps you grounded. That's that doorknob. Um, that's where the analogy is coming in. Cause they love to watch you just flutter around. They like, they, they, they love your energy, but they pull you back down to earth so that you can relax and feel safe and protected 
and taken care of and um, they keep you level headed or they would. I don't know, someone wasn't looking at a connection like that. They were just going polar opposites. Hell, hell no, this is weird. I don't know. But I can't stop looking at you. What the fuck? You know, it's that type of energy. But they weren't seeing that. That's why opposites attract. Because it creates balance. Lock it. I got that last night. That reading hasn't uploaded yet. It will before this, maybe. Hopefully. Who knows? Um, forever with you. You're close to this person's heart. This person carries your love with them. Or you carry um, the love you have for them or their love with you. Forever gifts. That's making me think of being with you, being around you, would be like a forever gift. Like it's always a gift. Every day, every moment, every second with you is a gift. Like it's... It's full of wonder. Like, you never know what to expect. So there's one person where it's like, you always know what to expect with them because they do the same fucking thing all the time. It's just their demeanor. And they might want to kind of get out of that rut, but they'll never fully change because that's just who they are. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you're like, do, do, do. Oh, let's do this. <laughs> and they'll be like, okay. Like, it's exciting. They never know what to expect from you because you might just go on an even keel. Okay, that's fine. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, over here. <laughs> and they really like that because it keeps shit interesting. It's like never a dull moment when you're around. You know what I mean? We got courage twice. You are safe. And I just said this person wants to make, make you feel safe and protected. Fear is an illusion. And it is. Get out of your pride and ego. That's where all the fear and shit is. Um, have the courage to... Say what you need to say and what you want to say. Um, set strong boundaries. I feel like a lot of you have set, set strong boundaries, which is probably evoking some fear in this person. Like, are you going to rage out at me? Are you going to flip out when you find this out? I don't feel like you're going to flip out. I feel like even if you get upset, you might just be like, all right, I, I, I got to think about this for a minute. You know what I mean? Like, this person might come in and give you something to think about. They might come in and give this goddess energy something to think about or this healer. I feel like you are a healer. You've helped heal this person um, so that they have the courage to move forward and make, and make the right choices for the situation for themselves. But I, I also feel like you're, you're giving someone something to think about. A lot of things to think about. There's the polarity I was talking about. The dark and the light. You're opposite. Yeah, this person wants to take action towards you. Get ready to receive because something's coming in. Yeah, there's a lot of passion here. There's a fine line between passion and anger, but I feel like this person is very passionate about you and your passions in life, like whatever you're driven to do is like light, it's, um, lighting the spark within, within this person to go after their own dreams, to take chances, to do things, to step outside the box. Someone's stepping outside the box because they're... They're following your lead. Like, okay, I'm going to take a page out of your book because this this seems like it. it, it I should. <laughs> like, this is kind of what it feels like. Um, real quick, what is this goddess healer energy about? Yeah, somebody wants to give to you because it wasn't balanced before. This healing energy is creating a level of balance within this King of Pentacles, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. This King of Pentacles person has some pent-up aggression um, that they're having a hard time releasing. I don't know if they're angry. With, I don't think they're angry with you. I feel like it's like past stuff. Um, they could be angry at another person right now and they just, it's like... I don't know. I feel like I'm biting my tongue. Like I, I have something to fucking say and yeah, this person's biting their tongue and it might have to do with a relationship. They're very burdened about their relationship. So if this person's in a commitment there, it could be very stressful. Um, I don't know. There's a lot falling on this person's shoulders. It feels like resentment. 
there's someone here who is very resentful. And I don't feel like they're, this resentment is like, oh, you motherfucker, you stole my person. I don't feel like it's that. This feels like there is someone in this energy who is in a partnership that could be in a marriage. And it's weighing on them heavily. The responsibilities in this relationship are weighing on this person. Um, whatever issues are going on between them and their partner or whatever, you know, go into this conversation, especially if you're partnered, married or whatever, like long-term commitment, <coughs> go into this, um, conversation with the, with your partner. Cause this is just a small aspect of this reading. If you're partnered with compassion, um, don't fly off the handle when you have this serious conversation or when you hear whatever they're going to say to you. But I feel like this King of Pentacles has something to say. Like, you know, he or she feels kind of disrespected, unappreciated, left behind. Something is not balance. Like, I do everything kind of energy. And it's like, I, I can't keep, I can't keep this shit together all by myself. You know, if we're a partner, then we need to be a team. And if we're not going to be a team, then I can't do this anymore. That's kind of what this feels like. And that is the truth. Um, someone's been heavily, heavily thinking about whatever connection they're currently in. And I don't know. Whoever this is has tried and tried and tried and tried and tried and tried and tried, and tried to make it work. And it... They just don't know what to do because of their circumstances. Whatever it is, it's difficult. And um, they don't communicate well with whoever they're partnered with. They don't know how to balance things out. Yeah. Tower, this person might just suddenly leave. They might just go, or I can't do this. I'm out. Like, I, I can't. You you don't listen to me. You hear what I say and you just ignore it. Nothing ever changes. I'm out of here. That's what that feels like. That's what that person might say to someone. Because um, shit's not balanced. It's, it's like kind of in limbo. Like, are we going to work together? Is it going to be fair? Is this going to balance out or is it going to be done? So there is a connection that's kind of up in limbo for someone. Just breathe through this situation if that is you. There is soulmate energy here. Yeah, someone's keeping their composure. There could be someone who actually wants to talk to another person, whether they're in a partnership or not. Um, for some of you, this person could be in a shitty relationship and it's like they want to say something to you, but they want to go about it in the right way. But for others of you, you're just kind of breathing through the energies and just doing your own thing. You're in Zen mode. Um, you know that whatever's meant to be will be and whoever's meant for you will come in or you'll be, you know, put in there. They'll be put in your path and you can move towards them. It just depends on you know, the situation. Someone's keeping their composure because they feel a strong connection towards you and they really want to talk. It's almost like I'm going to be stone faced and pretend I got nothing to fucking say. But this person has a lot to say and this doesn't feel bad. Yeah, that they've been thinking about the fork in the road because they've been dealing with the never ending story forever. Like this shit never changes. Nothing ever changes. My life is just monotonous and uh, and stressful. Maybe I should, maybe I should have taken the fucking right and not the left, you know, like I went the wrong damn way and I don't know how to fix this, but I, I want, I want to change course. It's making me think of when you're driving in the car, you know what I mean? It's like, oh crap, I missed my turn. And you have no GPS, okay? So you just get to use your internal GPS. You got to figure it out. You got to use your smarts, you know? It's like, all right, use your head. I missed the turn back there. There's nowhere to turn around. How am I going to get back to the back to that intersection or back to where I need to be? And as this person or you is trying to get back to the intersection so they can take the right turn so that they can, you know, head your way or be with you or talk to you or whatever. They end up going around the long way because there's no place to turn around. It's like being on a highway when you can't, no U-turns, you know. Um, some people do it anyways. But they didn't, it's like, I don't want to make the wrong move. Because, you know, doing a U-turn, pulling a U-E is like uh, breaking the law. So they don't want to do anything 
bad, basically. They don't want to make the wrong decision, so they just keep going. Well, they end up going around, and they're like, I'm never going to find this fucking intersection again. Like, it's gone. Like, I don't know. I don't even remember where it was. I don't remember what town it was in. You know what I mean? But then the whole they don't realize <laughs> that that big loop that they did, they put them on the other end of the road. So as you took that right and you're at the end of, you know, the right turn, you, you went the right way, you're, you're at the end, almost to the end of that, that path, and they're right there with you. They just didn't even know what road they were on. It was like, oh, shit, I remember this road. Because you know sometimes you turn down a road, a back road or whatever, and you're just like, oh, I've never been down here before. And then you're like, wait a minute, it looks kind of familiar. And then you're like, oh, yeah, I know that road. And it just all clicks. Something's clicking for someone because they're going, I don't know where the fuck I am. I don't know what to do. I don't know. I have no direction. I, I, I should have done this, but I didn't. And, you know, whatever. But they made the right choice all along because they needed to learn. They needed to do something. They needed to handle something. They had to do whatever they needed to do. You know, it's different for everyone. Um, and if they were in a relationship, they had to settle that shit before they came your way. But they ended up on the right road at the right time, right where you are. Food for thought. <laughs> That's a really cool analogy. I love it when analogies come out like that. So we're going to use the fairy cards. I used this in Scorpio's reading, which is on Patreon at this time. That was actually a pretty good reading. Um, it was pretty decent. I really liked the collective one for last night. That was cool. So what's up with breathe? Somebody might want to take you out to eat or eating is significant. Um, I don't feel like it has to do with dietary changes. This is either like going out on a date, uh, making someone dinner, something like that. Um, I don't know, something to do with that, like dating the star. I just heard, I just want to feed you. I really want to feed you. <laughs> and it doesn't feel like a, you know, a sexy time thing. A sensual thing. <laughs> I just heard in my head. It could be. Um, but anyways, that doesn't matter. I just want to feed you. So there's someone in this energy who, you know, it's that nurturing energy. You know what I mean? Where it's like, I, I just want to take care of you. I want to make sure you're happy and healthy and satisfied and enjoy the food that I make kind of thing. So that could be in here for some of you. Some of you like either Brie Cheese or your name is Brie or the, the, a name Brie, Brianna, something like that. There could be an Aquarius here as well. Um, keep your emotions in check is what I just heard. Just breathe. With whatever this person is going to say, just <sighs> stay balanced and calm. That's really... Maybe some of you should meditate today just in case this person want, has something to say so that you're all zen, you know? Um, what's up with soulmates? But this is like keeping your balance, your, your emotions balanced and not overreacting or underreacting. It's, you might have to tell someone else to calm down. If someone comes towards you, you might have to be like, all right, you can talk to me, just breathe. Like, it's not that difficult. Like, we, we'll get through this conversation together. <laughs> it's kind of what this feels like. Because um, I don't know. Most of you, I don't feel like you'll be like, Whoa! I feel like somebody else might, like, hyperventilate. I, you know when you get scared and nervous and angry and upset and it's like, uh, someone might start hyperventilating. You might have to be there to be like, it's okay. Just breathe. It's okay. Some of my start hyperventilating because of something. Huh. I don't know. Be prepared for an overreaction from someone. Soulmates. Could be from a friend of yours. Because mate is standing out to me. One of your mates. Yeah, it could be one of your friends. Um, my... They might go into panic mode and freak out because they're realizing that 
they friend zone the wrong person or something. I don't know, there's a mistake here. Or they're upset over something that happened to a friend of theirs. You might have to help calm somebody down because something might happen to someone's friend and they're not gonna know how to handle it. For some of you. Oh, shiitake. Oh, we have the hermit. Yeah, someone's keeping to themselves. They're keeping their feelings. Oh, wow. Yeah, this emperor person is keeping their feelings to themselves. There's a tower for you. Um, this two of cups situation comes in out of nowhere. I don't know, for some reason, if this emperor person wants to have a new beginning because there's love and passion here between the two of you, truth be told, I find you sexy, sexy. I want to do you, do you, do you. I want to with that song I want to make love to you all I want to do is make love to you or whatever there's that and love like emotion and it's like okay to be honest you do the whole package I want it all with you kind of thing and that's going to come out of nowhere and if this person who's speaking this to you isn't the one who's going to be all like <sighs> like freaking out someone else might freak out when this person comes in and tells you how they feel like oh shit I can't believe they're going to move on together. Oh, my God. Oh, I don't know. Something like that. So it could be an external person who's not going to be very fucking happy that you found love, basically. Oh, yeah. Someone's going to be very burdened by this connection. I don't feel like it's you and this person, though. It's somebody else. Somebody's going to feel left out and alone. But they're going to try to keep their composure. And that could be where the rage is coming in, like... All right, I'm gonna, it just doesn't bother me. This doesn't bother me at all, but it bothers them a lot. Like a lot, a lot. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Um, what's up with this poised energy? Soul mirroring, exposing all, revealing, yeah. When this connection, these feelings get revealed, someone's not gonna be very happy about it because they feel like you're their lifeline. So there's a couple energies that are interested in you and there's one that it's not reciprocated. It's like you feel connected and want to be with what with someone or you'd move forward with them because this connection is coming out of nowhere. It's like, whoop, there it is. And it's like, whoa, let's, I went from being single as a Pringle to I didn't even know that you gave a shit kind of thing. Like, like where'd you come from? whoever you are, whether you know him or not. I feel like you do know him. Um, I just heard you better fucking know me by now. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> Anyways, so you do know this person. It's going to come in out of nowhere and it's going to upset somebody else. Yeah, it's your twin flame that's coming in out of nowhere. You are strongly connected to this person. And after rest and recovery, there's a restart. Because that's kind of what this is. It's like taking a breather. You took a breather from this person. They took a breather from you. Whatever it is, you're not talking to them. You guys spent some time alone, you know, doing your thing. They're doing their thing. Just trying to figure out life and, you know, gain direction. So it feels like, um, yeah, someone's coming in. Knave of Swords. They're paying attention to you. Paying attention to a Queen of Swords energy, potentially. I just heard the truth of the matter is something just listen to yourself and not others I don't know there's something beautiful coming in here which is awesome that's pretty much what I have for you for today um because I I heard don't give too much away don't give too much away so it's like don't give too much of yourself to another person allow it to be balanced but don't give too much information away keep some things to yourself keep a little mystery that was in Libra's reading like maintain a little mystery because we don't need to know every step of a situation but that yeah something might start off as friends there's a friend of yours that's going to say something to you regardless I understand that a friend is in my life for a reason you could have really helped this person and for some of you this connection that's coming out of nowhere could have nothing to do with you, especially if you're helping another person. You could be helping them navigate through their own partnership because they are a friend of yours and you care about them. And it's like, all right, well, if you really love so-and-so and you want to make this work, this is my best advice. 
but take any advice, even if it's from a trusted friend, with a grain of salt because you have free will. You can choose to take advice or leave it. You can choose to take like little nuggets of information like, yeah, I think I'll try that, but the rest of that ain't going to work for me. Trust, like use your discernment and trust yourself. Someone who's like truly um, part of your soul tribe, truly connected to you, if they give you advice, they're just going to reiterate to you what you already know, what you're already thinking and feeling, if they're being honest. Because a lot of times when we're asking someone else for advice, we already know what we should do. We're looking for confirmation, like, okay, I know I should say this, do this, whatever, but I'm going to ask so-and-so. And then if you've got that person that's like, oh, fuck them, you know, they're not worth your time, just leave so-and-so alone, blah, blah, blah. you know, like they're being very negative about the situation. They're not really giving you advice. They're just like kind of blowing it off or they're giving you crap advice and you, you don't feel right with what they're saying, but you're like, oh yeah, I should forget about so-and-so. Like, it's almost like they try to convince you or you try to convince yourself that what they're saying is right, even though you know it's the exact opposite of what you should be doing or what you want to do. That's where crap advice can be detrimental because a lot of people do get swayed in a different direction because they, it's like, well, maybe they're seeing something I'm not, you know? You know the answers you need are within. So if someone's acting that way, you know, how do you feel about the advice they're giving? If you're kind of like, I guess, then it's not right for you. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? But anyways, I love you guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.